The Lost Pillars of Enoch by Tobias Churton is an interesting read about the myth of an ancient lost knowledge, yet a knowledge that was preserved in fragments that were handed down to those who were considered worthy of it. According to Churton, this is one of the foundational myths that has informed most of the esoteric traditions of the West. Indeed, the myth can be found in contemporary times via the work of people like Graham Hancock and his search for an advanced antediluvian culture. It can also be found with much less academic rigor or honesty in projects like Ancient Aliens. Seriously, History Channel, just stop it. While entertaining, you are contributing to this plague of pseudoscience and the ongoing sleep of reason. But I digress. Tobias Churton is a well-known author and scholar of Western esotericism. He's written on Gnosticism, Hermeticism, Freemasonry, and Rosicrucianism. He's also written a series of books on the life of Aleister Crowley. He holds a master's degree in theology from Brazen Rose College, Oxford, and was appointed honorary fellow at Exeter University in 2005. The Lost Pillars of Enoch begins with a discussion of a passage from the Jewish historian Josephus, in which Josephus mentions two pillars created by Seth, the son of Adam, intended to preserve knowledge after Adam predicted the destruction of the world by fire and by flood. All of this original godly knowledge was inscribed on both pillars with the hope that at least one would survive these eschatological events and hence preserve this ancient wisdom. These pillars were erected before the great flood described in Genesis, so one, according to Josephus, still survives. The core theme of the book is exploring this myth that there was an advanced ancient antediluvian culture and that humanity has devolved from this earlier age of enlightenment. Churton begins by exploring the flood story in Genesis, specifically Genesis 6, 1 through 8, which is prelude to the flood story and discusses the sons of God, the B'nai Elohim, observing human women, and they saw that they were fair and they took wives for themselves of all that they chose. Genesis 6, 4 mentions the Nephilim, who the Bible tells us were also on earth then, and that the sons of God, quote, went into the daughters of humans who bore children to them. These were the heroes that were of old, warriors of renown. It is after this passage in Genesis 6-5 that God observes the wickedness of humanity and decides to extinguish humanity and all the animals, creeping things, and birds of the air as well. It is here where Churton brings in the Book of Enoch. Enoch is a descendant of Adam, and there is a curious passage in Genesis 5 which describes the genealogy from Adam to Noah. And this mentions Enoch, who walked with God, and then he was no more because God took him. The Bible uses the phrase, walked with God, several times and seems to refer to piety. But the phrase, because God took him, is unclear and has been interpreted a number of ways. Some believe that it simply means that Enoch died, though others have interpreted this to mean that Enoch's life ended without death. A tradition developed that believed that when God took Enoch, Enoch observed all the mysteries of the universe. He gained knowledge of the end of the world and the course of human history. The Book of Enoch is a pseudepigraphic text which means that its authors were unknown and used the name of Enoch in an attempt to give it legitimacy. Biblical scholars hold that it is a composite text reflecting different authors in different times. It was likely written over a period of a few hundred years with the earliest segments composed during the second century BCE. Although it is non-canonical except for the Ethiopian church, 
it was very popular among early Christian communities, and its messianic and apocalyptic vision was likely very influential in the development of early Christian theology. The Book of Enoch details how Enoch observed heavenly tablets of knowledge, and he then writes down all that he has seen. It is here that Churton notes a parallel with the story of the Egyptian god Thoth inscribing cosmic knowledge into temples, which would later be translated into books written by Hermes Trismegistus. Indeed, Churton uncovers a tradition where Hermes Trismegistus and Enoch were seen as the same figure. I think this connection between the Book of Enoch, the Corpus Hermeticum, and the Emerald Tablets of Hermes Trismegistus is the most interesting idea introduced in the book, and not one I have seen proposed before. This also gets to the heart of the subtitle of the book, when science and religion were one. If Enoch observed ultimate truth while with God, then all knowledge is godly knowledge. There is no distinguishing between religion and science. Knowledge of God is scientific knowledge. If I'm not mistaken, this is a theme repeated by some Enlightenment thinkers who identified the laws of nature with the laws of God. After introducing this foundational myth, Churton traces it through the Gnostics, specifically referring to the Gnostic tract, the Three Stelles of Seth. Uh, he also traces it through Jewish Kabbalah, the rediscovery of Hermeticism at the birth of the Italian Renaissance, the influence of this myth upon the work of Copernicus and eventually Newton, the work of uh, William Blake, uh, the Enlightenment and the Freemasons, and on through the Theosophy of Madame Blavatsky and the Thelema of Aleister Crowley. I will admit, I found getting through some of the book a bit of a slog, as it, it is very dense with names and dates, especially the latter chapters on Freemasonry. It is still an interesting with a good eye to detail, just dense. Churton ends the book by reflecting on comparative religion, which he critiques in its suggestion that all religions are one. That may be a view held by some, or maybe a view held in the past, but it is not a view currently held in the academic study of religion, which tends to focus more on the history of religions rather than comparative projects. I have heard many say that all religions teach the same thing, but I've never heard that from a scholar of religion. That said, he does recognize a common theme via the esoteric aspects of the world religious traditions, which I would agree with. This common theme is an inner experience of self-knowledge, of gnosis. Churton argues for a religion of body, mind, and spirit, an integral religion a religion that is not antithetical to science and allows for both gnosis and communal practice, a religion grounded above all in love. The Lost Pillars of Enoch is an interesting read, though, as I mentioned, a rough read at times. Churton is a careful scholar and clearly an expert on the material presented in the book. Those who already know some of the history and figures of Western esotericism will likely appreciate this book more than those who are just stepping into the stream of Western esotericism. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll know when I post new content. This channel is home to the Rebel Spirit Radio podcast on YouTube, but I'm also working on creating additional content like book reviews and educational videos on topics of spirituality, the history of religions, and sacred ecology. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider making a one-time donation via PayPal. You can find the link in the video description below. Until next time, may you be in peace, may you flourish, and may you nurture your rebel spirit.